This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by Audible.com. Hello, Internet, and welcome back to another episode of Ask the Buffalo, the show where you can ask me, Ashley Escava, any question you may have from the wide world of fabulous technology. Every Tuesday, we put up a call for questions on TechnoBuffalo.com. You can leave your question in that post comments. Otherwise, you can send them to me any time of the day or night at Ashley Escava or at Techno Buffalo on Twitter. Just use the hashtag AskTheB so I can see it, and usually I answer between three and five questions every episode. So let's get answering. This is Ask the Buffalo. Twitter user at Michael Sagna asks, would you consider yourselves eye sheep in your office? Well, first of all, we're not eye sheep. There's a really good split of Android and iOS users here in the office. So I use an iPhone 5S. And then I know that John actually goes back and forth between an HTC One and a developer edition of the Galaxy S4. And he's also really in love with the LG G2 right now. So between the video people, between the hosts, we're actually split really evenly. I actually used to be Android Ashley, so I'm really familiar with Android and I actually really like it. I think it's a really good operating system. So I wouldn't say iSheep. I think that everybody here at the office knows that iOS has got some problems just like every other OS, but at the end of the day, there's kind of a perception issue. And this is where it kind of becomes a problem. So Samsung, HTC, all of these LG, all these people, OEMs who make Android phones each get their own like news coverage. OK, so if we imagine like this is all their news coverage in one OS. OK, and then another OS gets the same amount of coverage, but it's only one device, the iPhone. So Consider it that way, it doesn't actually seem that bad. I know a lot of people have been like, oh, you guys, all you talk about is Apple. Well, at the end of the day, Apple is an OS and it's newsworthy and people read it. So, and people also read all the Android stuff. So um, yeah, I'm sorry, we're not ice sheep. I hate to break it to you, we're not. Twitter user at ZSchmeez asks, what was the first cell phone you ever owned? I love this question so much because I absolutely remember it. The first cell phone that I ever had my own account with on Sprint that I bought with my own money was the Samsung SPHN 400. I totally remember the clamshell design and it seemed so freaking cool to me at the time. And the screen looked so colorful. It was just a cool little phone. And I love that you could see the screen even if you had the clamshell down, it was awesome. Uh, and after that, I upgraded to the ultra sleek and beautiful and will forever have a place in my heart, Samsung MMA880, which I remember paying a lot of money for. I think it was like $360 on contract, I, but I did love it so, so, so much. I actually think I kept that phone for a super long time and then upgraded to the Palm Pre in 2009. So from there, it was an Evo 4G and then an Evo 3D, then a Galaxy S2, then an Evo LTE, then an iPhone 5. I've had so many phones and all of the review units I've checked out and used in between. So uh, it's it's been a very fun phone journey for me, but I actually remember the very first sort of cellular thing that I had was I had a pager. That was the very first thing that I had. So it was a little tiny, colorful pager back in the 90s when having a pager was super cool and you could get real cute ones. That was like the thing. Um, half of you guys probably weren't even born at that point. But yeah, I, uh, I remember my first pager as well. So yeah, definitely. Um, it was definitely weird to think about going back and, and thinking about all the phones and everything that I used to own. So thanks for that question. I appreciate it. It's Alan asks, do you think we will see innovative phones in the future or just improvements and improvements to what we have now? Well, I actually have kind of a bone to pick about the word innovation. So right now we have this sort of really weird consumer entitlement about innovative products. Like people are always writing articles about Apple can't innovate anymore. Well, if you really think about it, it's only been three years since Apple innovated an entirely new genre niche. They invented, you know, this consumer need for the iPad. So we, you know, the tablet market was really created by Apple. And, and now we have lots of great manufacturers making tablets, but really they, that was an innovation that made a huge difference in how people use technology. Innovation is sort of a term that gets bandied around a lot, kind of like the word epic. So it sort of loses its meaning if we use it all the time. And the thing is, is nothing since the iPad has been innovative in the sense that 
it's changed the way we use technology. Maybe wearables, I think it, there is a way through there to innovate, but we haven't quite gotten there yet. If there's anything beyond that, I would say maybe Nest has innovated the way you use a home thermostat. There will always be innovations and we may not see them for another five or 10 years even, but at the end of the day, we will absolutely see a major jump at some point, depending on the technology we have. Loa Agibe says, Ashley, are you married? Yes, I am in fact married. It's a quick question, but I figured I'd answer it because a lot of people ask it. Um, but yeah, I'm married. He's great. He's the best. He lets me buy a bunch of gadgets, brings them in the house. He lets me spend all my money on crazy toys like these Android figures. I, it's, uh, he's, he's very good about encouraging me to misbehave with uh, gadgets and money. So thanks, husband. Sorry to interrupt the show, but I got to talk to you guys about audible.com. So I live about 60 miles from Techno Buffalo headquarters. That is a really big commute in Southern California. And you know what keeps me sane? Audible.com. They're the biggest audiobook site on the web. They have over 100, 100,000 titles to choose from. That's a really big deal for somebody who listens to and reads a bunch of books a week like me. It keeps me on my toes. Fiction, nonfiction, spoken word, it's all on Audible. Oh, even better, they just released their iPad app so you can use Audible services in a beautiful and specifically designed for iPad interface. Right now, I'm actually listening to Snow Crash. So that's my recommendation for this month, my all-time favorite cyberpunk novel by Neil Stevenson. But if hero protagonist and YT are not your cup of tea, you can get a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook from us if you go to audible.com slash techno. Well, that's it for this week's Ask the Buffalo. Thank you so much for watching. Please give the show a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I always appreciate that. And please check us out at technobuffalo.com for all the latest and greatest tech news. Until next week, I'm Ashley Skeva. See you next time. Hey guys, Ashley here. Just wanted to let you know that if you liked what you just saw, we've got two other shows that go live every single week. Redinger's Rants, where John totally goes nuts about issues that bug him across consumer technology and Rumor Roundup, where he tells you all about the best rumors in the world of tech. So click the text below that says subscribe. And if you want to check out either of those shows, click right over here. See you next time. Thanks for watching.